um, in the chat box here, I'm sending you a link of an article in the QuickBooks blog um, that basically shows uh, a history of the development of bank feeds in the past uh, year or so. Um, so I think it's really, really good to, to, to go through it because if you haven't dug really, really deep into bank feeds in QuickBooks Online uh, lately, that will give you a good understanding um, in terms of you know what are the, the newer things that they're adding uh, into uh, QuickBooks uh, Online Banking. So a couple of the things that stand out, and let me just go into uh, Online Bank Feeds here. So I'm here in the in the QuickBooks Online sample file. And, and, and by the way, just in case you didn't know this, um, this is one of the best things about QuickBooks Online. It has nothing to do with QuickBooks Online itself. It has to do with the capacity to pull up a sample file. If you in Google type QBO test drive or QuickBooks Online test drive, so if you just type uh, QuickBooks Online test drive or QBO test drive and you click on that, it sends you straight into a sample file that is always there, always available. So this is a great for doing samples for a quick questions. If somebody asks you, hey, can QuickBooks Online do this? It's great for, to just log into a sample file and play around with it. Anyway, so that's what I'm playing with. So a couple of things, um, we're going to do a full episode on in-depth bank feeds. So we're going to go really, really deep uh, in about, uh, I would say about a month, right? So June 16th. Uh, we're going to go really deep into all the in-depth features of QuickBooks Online bank feeds. So I want to just point out some really important ones. Um, number one, you can actually upload um, a CSV file, something you cannot do with QuickBooks Desktop. So very often you'll have some smaller banks uh, that don't export the .qbo file and they only have this .csv file available. There's only one major drawback with it right now, but I, I, am, I am hoping and fantasizing that QuickBooks is working on this, is that when you upload a CSV file into bank feeds, you cannot bring in the check number. Um, so you can only bring in date, description, or the payee, and the amount. So date, description, and the amount. So for now, the CSV upload works pretty well for uh, not transactions that don't have check numbers or maybe for uh, petty cash transactions and stuff like that. But that's, that's huge, right? Because otherwise you need a special tool to convert CSV to QBO. So that's one of the real nice things that you won't really find that in QuickBooks uh, desktop. The other really nice thing about uh, QuickBooks Online is a batch modify. So batch modify is something that, again, QuickBooks desktop doesn't have um, that allows you to grab several transactions. For example, let's say I want to grab uh, this one, this one, and this one. So I'm grabbing basically three transactions in a row. And, I, and just before I click on anything, let me show you something else. I'm going to uncheck these. And something that QuickBooks Desktop cannot do, that they actually got it right in QuickBooks Online, is I can check on one, and then I can hold the Shift key, and then I can go two, three, four, five down, whatever the group if, is I want to select. And then we, I can Shift click. And QuickBooks Online knows that it's going to select everything in between. So anyway, when I select a whole bunch of transactions, I can come up here to Batch Actions, and I can click on Modify Selected. Now, for this particular case, uh, one of these have a matching. So let me uncheck this one. And we'll do uh, Modify Selected. And what this allows you to do is allows you to, in batch, so everything that I selected in one shot, uh, select one vendor or one customer, just one payee, and one uh, expense category. So basically, in one shot, I can select a vendor and a category, hit apply, and it will automatically uh, rename those two uh, to the new vendor and the expense category. So that's actually a, a really, really important uh, feature that QuickBooks Online Bank Feeds has that you cannot find um, in QuickBooks Desktop. Um, the other really important feature is that in here, this, this uh, text that says Books by Bessie, this is the original text from the bank. Now, in QuickBooks Desktop, you, you don't get a copy of the original text from the bank. So the problem that happens sometimes, and this is more common with end users, not so much accountants and power users, is that they'll reclassify something here, um, and then they'll book it, they'll, they'll, they'll enter the transaction, and then you will have no record of what the actual original bank name was. So the fact that QuickBooks Online copies that original bank text into the memo, it's huge. Because in certain cases, and Michelle may cover this on the reclassify uh, tool section towards the end of the webinar, uh, where if you actually 
are looking at a whole bunch of transactions and are looking at the memos and you notice that you selected the wrong uh, payee, then you can really identify major potential errors in your, um, in your bookkeeping. Uh, the other sort of hidden feature that's here is that you can add attachments on the fly. Um, so one of the deficiencies of working with QuickBooks Desktop with bank feeds is that you have to first download all the transactions and add them and accept them, and then you have to go one by one manually to add the attachments to each one, assuming that you are adding attachments. So what's, what's really nice about this is this allows you to click Add Attachment, find your attachment in your desktop, in your Dropbox, whatever, and attach it on the fly. So that's actually a really, really, really good, important thing um, that QuickBooks Online has. So sort of one of those little tiny uh, hidden features in there. And like I said, we're going to do several examples on, on the 616 episode. Uh, the other, uh, other kind of hidden feature, it's here on the rules. Okay, so a little bit different than QuickBooks Desktop. Um, QuickBooks Desktop, every time you create a transaction, it will ask you whether or not to create a rule for you. In QuickBooks Online, it's a little bit different. Uh, rules have to be ex explicitly created. Uh, they don't get done sort of behind the scenes. Uh, and, and, and for some people, that's good. For some people, they will probably agree with me that they would prefer to have a lot more control over new rules that get created. But what bank rules um, can do that is a lot more powerful than QuickBooks Desktop is you can have rules that behave one way as money is coming out and a different way as money is coming in. So let, let me just, let's just look at the bank feeds here and just look at an example. Um, I think I have, uh, for example, this is, uh, we have, let's see, we have a rental here. So you notice that a rental has a, a $200 transaction here and then a $1,200 transaction uh, on this side. So what you can start noticing is that we have the same vendor being used for expenses or for money out and then for money in as well. So the big question is, you know, when money comes in from a particular vendor, that may be one category. And when money comes in, comes out uh, to a particular vendor, that could be a different category altogether. So it is quite possible that depending on the transactions that you're doing, uh, on, the, on the type of transaction, that could be it. So one of the examples is American Express. When American Express pays you money, that is probably a customer paying you through a merchant processor of some sort. But when you pay American Express, that is probably you paying a bill um, to a credit card. So that, that's the nice thing about the rules. So I'm going to go up here to the rules and just kind of show you how that will work real quick. And, and again, this is just a teaser for a real in-depth bank feeds episode we're going to have. Um, so with money out, we can say, look, if it has the word, like I, I used American Express, but it has the word rental, you know, make the money out. And you can actually choose based on which account is coming from. So, I mean, another uh, use case for this would be, so if I am paying with a credit card, um, you know, if I'm paying American Express with a credit card, that's probably interest. But if I'm paying American Express with my bank, that's probably the bill to pay my American Express credit card. And if the money is coming in from American Express into my credit card, that is probably uh, points or rewards. But then if money is coming out, uh, wait, if money is coming out from my American Express, uh, you know, to American Express in this case, uh, that would be uh, likely, you know, uh, p paying a fee of some sort. So, so, so the context in which what account I'm paying from or where I'm seeing this transaction, plus where there's money in or money out, um, could be a separate rule on its own. And that's something that just QuickBooks Desktop cannot do. And like I said, we're going to cover uh, in-depth examples on the advanced bank, bank feeds episode. Hector, you want to go ahead now and talk about the automatic reports? Right. The other, the other super cool feature, as the title of the webinar suggested, that, um, that QuickBooks Online has that you just can't find in QuickBooks Desktop is uh, creating uh, systems for automatically emailing uh, reports, okay? And what's really nice about this is you can automatically email a report daily, weekly, monthly, and it could be a regular report or it could be a custom report. So I want to show you a couple of use cases. So I'm going to show you at the demo now, Michelle, if you want to give me control. So I'll show you a few use cases on that. So I'm going to go into the reports tab here on the left side. And then I'm going to pull up, let's say, a balance sheet. So one of the, my, my really huge pet peeves in a balance sheet 
is that the balance sheet doesn't show me the comparative um, with last year. I mean, I would say nine times out of ten I'm pulling up a balance sheet. I can't use it by itself. I need to have that comparative. So I'm going to go ahead and click uh, customize and then click previous period here and then click uh, dollar change and then click uh, run report. So this is a really important thing for me. Is I, I just can't, um, can't really look at a, a balance sheet unless I have a previous period comparison. Now, sometimes you may want to do previous period and sometimes you want to do previous year depending on exactly what you're trying to achieve. Um, you know, if, if you're a, more of a tax preparer type of, uh, type of, of user, you may want to do uh, previous year. So let me do uh, this year here on the balance sheet and compare it with the, with the year before. That way I'm comparing them uh, this year and then, and then last year. And then this is a report that I typically don't want to sit there and, and, and modify each time. So I'm going to go ahead and click uh, Save Customizations on the top. So I'll click Save Customizations and then I'll call it uh, Balance Sheet with Last Year Dollar Comparative or something like that. Okay. Then I'm going to I have a couple of things I can do. It's I can add it to a group and then by it being part of a group, this is where I can start scheduling it. So I'm going to go to Add New and then I'm going to call it Monthly. That way I basically created a, a report group called Monthly and then I'm going to save all my custom reports into that monthly group right there. And also if I want any other users in QuickBooks to be able to see my, uh, my modified or my customized report, then I'll click on Share This Report with all, uh, with all Company Users. That way somebody else can, can take a look at that custom report. Let's say the other report that I pull I'm going to go, go ahead and do a profit and loss and then I'm going to click on collapse and I'm going to do transaction date I'll do this year and then I click on run and then I'm also going to click on uh, customize and then I'm going to do a uh, descending order and then I'll also do previous year and I'll do percent change. So let's say this is how I normally like seeing my, my profit and loss reports you know, like this. So again, I'm also going to customize this one and also give it a name, you know, with previous year percent change. And then, very important, I'm going to make this part of my monthly group and then I'm going to put it here under monthly and also share this with other users so that they can see it and hit OK. And then let's say, I'm going to show you one really interesting trick. This actually I learned from, from Stacy Kildow. She just, you know, it just blew my mind. It's simply, sometimes the simplest things are the greatest ones. So I'm going to go do a reconciliation. Okay, I'm going to do something that you know typically us accountants you know we, we don't do this, but um, a lot of our clients do, right? So I'm going to I'm going to reconcile this and just force a reconciliation with a reconciliation discrepancy. So I'm just going to show you real quick what obviously what you should never do, right? Something like this. But if your client happens to uh, do a reconciliation and do an automatic adjustment like this. Uh, when, you, when you see your profit and loss report, you're going to notice that a reconciliation discrepancy uh, transaction uh, shows up. So one of the things I like to do is I like to uh, open up my reconciliation discrepancy detail report like this. Here where says transactions, I'll put all dates and hit run report. And I know some of you know where I'm, where I'm going with this. I'm going to save customization and call it Recon discrepancy. Okay, and I'm also going to add this into my monthly report. So what's what's nice about this is um, I can proactively uh, set up my my QuickBooks um, to send me monthly reports. So I'm going to go to uh, reports. I'm going to click on my custom reports, and then I see my group. There's my monthly group there, right? Uh, and then I can edit this group. And I'm going to say, you know, we're going to set an email schedule and we're going to repeat these in a monthly basis on the, let's say, the sixth day of the month, right? Uh, or actually, every, every one month and we're going to do it on the sixth day of the month. And in something like this, and then I'll put my, my own email address here. And then basically, I set it and forget it. So I can, if I am the type of uh, pro advisor that just, um, that just, teaches our client what to do and then every once in a while they call us for support. I could at least monitor what they're doing. So if I see something crazy show up in, in that report, I know that maybe they're falling behind. And the most important thing is if they do a reconciliation discrepancy, I will see the details and exactly 
what they you know what they did and and even I could customize a report to put the end user that did that as well so I mean that's that's that I find that to be a really 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 powerful feature I really wish uh, QuickBooks desktop could do that I mean there's been many requests uh, for it to do that but for now I find that to be a, a real powerful super cool feature of, uh, of QuickBooks online